Well, Dr. Gemma Sampson, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. So we're going to talk about all things nutrition today and uh, and try and pick your brain and get as much knowledge as we can out of you in a, in a short video. Uh, but first, your answer to most questions is it depends. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, <laughs> it the is. ultimate nutrition. You're like, oh, what should I answer. eat? What should I eat? What should I do? What should I eat this? And it's like, it depends. It's like, well, I, is it a rest day? Is it training? Is it like off season? Is it the middle of your block? I, do you have a family? Are you traveling? Like there's so many factors that influence what is ideal or optimal for you to eat. And same as that there's no perfect diet for people either. So what you're saying is there's no such thing as a bad food I can eat. Pretty much, unless it's obviously like you're allergic to it or it's poisoned or it's moldy and going off, that is definitely bad. Yeah. But um, no, I think all foods definitely can be allowed. It's just learning how to include it in a way that's supporting whatever goals you have going at the time. See, so that gelato that I had was absolutely okay. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I've actually prescribed people gelato before. Oh, see, my kind of nutritionist. Yeah. This yeah. yeah, get yourself a dietitian that gives you, like, says you can eat yeah. pizza and pasta and ice cream. It's like, but it's just like not all the time. It's just like learning how to, how to and when to eat it. Okay, everything in moderation. Yeah. So for someone who's starting on triathlon and they're starting to think about their nutrition and the first questions with triathlon are always my body weight, should I be losing weight? How, how quickly should I be losing body weight? What does your first advice be for someone who's just starting out, like, to start thinking about nutrition? Uh, the first thing I'm, I pretty much say to everyone, regardless of what level they're, they're at, is looking at what you're eating in training. And uh, particularly if people are trying to lose weight, I see them trying to cut calories and cut energy in the training and then compromising their training. But it's it usually comes to backfire later on in the day because you're then super hungry and then you end up eating more the rest of the day. Whereas it's sort of counterintuitive to eat more when you're training but it means you can then eat normally and sort of, if you're trying to create a deficit, create it the rest of the day consistently rather than um, compromising your training. So yeah, look at what you're eating and training and especially when you're new to the sport, you will probably need more energy to support this, uh, the training sessions that you're doing than you would if you're two, three, four, five years in. Yeah, but on the flip side of that is when you start training and you get really hungry, like you never felt before, Yeah. You. you can't eat everything, can you? No. Some people do think, well, now I've gone for a long ride yeah. on a Saturday, the rest of the day, I can oh, eat whatever I like. A hundred percent. It's it's like, don't, it's, it's not trying to catch back and eat your calories or like ride to eat. Like it, it, it never actually balances out that way because you're so limited in what you can physically consume in exercise. Like you, you'd get sick or have diarrhea before you actually usually match your expenditure but then you're when you're not you're sitting here like we could eat huge amounts of food and there's it's all the time in the world um and so that's usually why i see people making a big mistake they're cutting back in training and then they're eating it all late eating it later and usually eating more than they've actually consumed over, yeah time. eating eating more than they've burned actually or consumed or expended during the exercise so but what i do see is that when people start shifting more of that food and energy into the training sessions that ravenous hunger that you're talking about like it just goes it's not there it's not even a problem but eating straight after a session yeah. is very important for recovery this is what we tell our athletes all the time yeah. as soon as you get off the bike or the run get some recovery nutrition in and what should that look like it depends <laughs> so, <laughs> there it is. again well that's the thing so it's going to depend on how much you're training how often you're training so some of the people i see are training three times a day Others, they might be training once a day. And especially if you're um, working full-time as well. So like when I was doing Ironman training, I was working full-time. And so I was training before work, I was training at lunchtime, and then I was training afterwards. And so if you're juggling all that, you need to be organized, you need to be prepared. And that's where usually people get unstuck is that they're, they're, the nutrition is an afterthought. They're like, oh, like I'm hungry, I need food. And they just grab for whatever they can get. And it maybe it meets their energy needs, but it's not supporting them to recover well. So um, it can be, it, it, again, it, it's going to depend on like if you're at home or if you're on like at work or you're on the go, you're traveling. Um, but ha sort of having a bit of a thought in advance as to what you could eat or what might be transportable. So I, some people will use smoothies that they've made at home and take with them to have on like poolside. So they've got at least something in their stomach or 
like pots of yogurt or overnight oats. Um, again, it's going to depend on the time of the day. Like it could be breakfast, it could be six o'clock in the morning, it might be midday. Um, it depends, but yeah. get something in yeah. immediately after your session. Uh, but you, you're only eating for recovery, you're not eating to, uh, to replace all those calories that you just burned. 100%. And this is where I, I see people, I guess, in endurance sports making a mistake is they are like trying to play catch up and they're trying to get all this energy later in the day when they're not maybe resting. But um, like your bre like breakfast, lunch, dinner on the whole, that might be relatively consistent throughout the week. But if you add the food up and into training, that's where the energy intake sort of varies. And it means that if the training goes for a bit, you sort of off season or you're injured or you're sick, the your appetite drops down with that change in training. Whereas when people are just fueling to sort of like survive or to fuel afterwards to play catch up, that's when they finish, they stop the training and they're stupidly hungry or crazy hungry. Like just, I call it like the cookie monster approach where you get in the door and you just like eat everything. Um, I might've done that a few times. Yeah. So like one of the trick or tip, uh, tips that I sort of say to people is say you're on the bike, um, have, something solid in your pocket that you could eat in like the last 30 minutes before you get in the door because it's kind of like lines the stomach and kind of like just tapers down that ravenous hunger just a little bit um and overriding that thought in your head that might be like oh but i don't need it it's like just don't don't worry about that it's just like preventative it's like proactive fueling or proactive recovery it's very good good advice because the tendency is when you're out in the park to go well i've only got an hour or 90 minutes left i can stop eating now and uh, i'll make it home i'll just have something when i get in but, yeah uh, like you say then you overcompensate and you get in and you eat everything in the fridge yeah yeah and it, just by having that little bit more when you're on the bike or you're on the run or you're out it means that you just can eat more normally and like even like amateurs pros time and time again it's usually a lot of like convincing to get them to try it but um the number of times that they've tried it like oh it really worked like, like yeah this is why i'm telling you to do it give it a go so that's Basically the key takeaways there are plan your nutrition. It's not something you do as an afterthought or when you start feeling hungry, then you quickly nip out to the shop or to the fridge or to the cookie jar. Uh, you need to plan your day as far as nutrition goes, just like you did your training. Your nutrition needs to be planned. So then it comes to race day and race day, all the rules are out the window, right? You can eat whatever you like. The more you eat, the better. Is that right? Yes and no. Um, I like I, the way I like to think about racing nutrition and everyday nutrition, like they're two related, but separate things. And so with racing, you tend to eat more, I guess, um, higher energy density, like, like more sugary stuff because you're trying to get more carbohydrate in, you're trying to get less fiber, um, less vegetables. So that's not everyday nutrition. Like that's not, um, what you'd want to do every day, but you want to test it out and trial it, that it actually works in, um, in your training because so many people will get to race day, they've, they're like, oh, I'm gonna try this gel or this drink or this bar or this combo, they've never tried it before and then they end up in the portal loo. And um, so yeah, make sure you do test and um, try out the things that you wanna do. Um, but it isn't like a free for all, like eat all the food. You do want more carbohydrate the day before your race, um, usually ends up being about 200 grams more, but where a lot of people are like, oh, like huge pasta party, like big dinner. Um, and then they go to bed and like, oh, I'm so full, I feel sick. <laughs> um, if you spread that out throughout the whole day, it means that you you don't end up with like this feeling really bloated or your sleep being compromised and um, it just sits better on the stomach as well. So I often say rather than have, trying to have the huge dinner at night, just have your normal dinner, bit less fiber, a bit less veg, and then maybe have a bigger lunch and like extra snacks throughout the day. Good, good pre-race pre uh, advice there. And what about race day itself? Sugars, carbs, yeah. the protein. I mean, a lot of people are just keep taking gels until you can't take any more gels. Yeah. Uh, is that necessarily the right approach or, or should you be doing like a moderation, just the bare minimum that you need? Again, it depends. Um, it, it will depend on like your speed and your intensity. So as your intensity and your speed goes up, you um, want more concentrated carbohydrates and more simple sugars and things. So that's where the gels, the drinks do tend to be where people end up um, because they're really quickly available and utilized. So during racing and exercise, when like you have those sugars, like it might be sweets, it might be lollies, it could be yeah, gels, whatever. You don't see that big spike in glucose that you do. If we add a gel now, our sugars would go through the roof. Um, but it will depend on like 
your speed and your intensity. So I see people starting usually with like solid foods, including a bit of solid food in their, in their racing. Um, but then as they start like stepping up the ranks, it does tend to shift over to more concentrated stuff. And again, there's no like one size fits all with people. It, it will come down to what you're used to, what you've tried. Um, there'll be stuff that you've used and you think this is amazing. It's the best thing ever. I could take it and I could, I'll be sick. Um, and so you can train your gut to get used to using um, carbohydrates. Um, you want to fuel as optimally as you can because remembering you're, you just can't, match. You can't consume and absorb as much as your body's expending. Yeah. Um, so there's always going to be a deficit and the purpose of fueling in there is to avoid getting hunger flat and or bonking where you've just like nothing in the tank and you can keep going, but you just got to go really slow. Good, good advice. So it's interesting that you say that the higher intensity, the more simple sugars, mm. because a lot of our, our audience, our viewers are training for an Ironman race day yeah. and an Ironman race day it's not really day. intense. And then they tend to just go, well, it's, I'm going to be out there all day. I need, I have to eat race fuel. I'm going to have 15 gels, yeah. which is Probably not a recipe ideal. for disaster. Yeah. For, you, for most people, it's a recipe for disaster. And I think personally, I think a lot of it is like the sweeteners and flavors in a lot of gels don't agree with people's guts. Um, so there's a physical limit to how much you can um, test. And so that is where like test it out in practice. Yeah. Cause if you've, never had 10 gels before. And I mean, I, I have worked with people who will have 18 gels in a race, but they know it works for them. Yeah. And then other people that have two and they're, they're in the portal. Yeah. So um, I used to use 18 gels in an Ironman. So, yeah, but so you, again, you wouldn't have started there. Like you would have no, started, exactly. you would and, have started with solid food. And also I'm, I was racing at close to eight hours for an Ironman. If you're doing 14, 15, 16 hours, yeah erring more towards real food. Yeah, some... and a combination of it. And I think sometimes people think it has to be all or nothing. Yeah. And you can use a combination and the slower that you're going or the more um, steady your pace is, then you can tolerate some fats and some proteins in there. It's not going to cause you issues as long as you're familiar with it. Um, and so, especially when it is, it is a long day, so you can get hungry as well. Um, so I find like, again, I've seen people, I've had people that are using bars, I've had people using like, pork pies. Like I've seen people eating all sorts of random stuff in you, but you'll find you probably crave salt. Um, often like the, when you're going along and slow. Um, so ensuring that you do have enough electrolytes and sodium and stuff, but, um, testing stuff out. And that's where usually people get stuck on race days that they've, they're like, Oh, like those corn chips look tasty. And like when they're in the run and they're like, Oh, actually, no, that was a really bad idea. What did I do that for? <laughs> Good advice, yeah. Test everything before race day. That's a golden rule yeah. for all things, not just nutrition. But the thing with nutrition is you kind of got to mock up your whole race weekend and do the day before and everything uh, to really test it. Otherwise, it's not really the test of nutrition. And that's where everyone comes unstuck in these oh, long, sure. long races. And the thing is, it's, you've, it's a huge investment that you've made into Like, yeah, like I did an Ironman. Like I spent a year training up for that and because I'm not a runner. <laughs> and so <laughs> that was the running. I had to sort of build the running up. But the yeah, the nutrition for it is the same. But a lot of people forget about it and leave that. They've got their bike, the kit, like everything. Everything's all like honed in, training sorted, and they're like, oh, what am I going to eat? And then you get to the expo and you're like, oh, that looks exciting, that looks exciting, and all these new things in combinations that you've never tried, and just it's like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, beware of the expo. It's yeah. A recipe for disaster. Yeah, and and so many people, they're like, you've put, you don't achieve what they want to achieve because their nutrition has let them down, and um, just from trying something new or even forget, and it happens to pros as well. Like with my PhD research, I was having all these interviews and there was athletes who were telling me like, I don't know why I did that. Like, what did I do that for? And in the moment you're gonna be excited and you're gonna be like adrenaline pumping and running. And so like, if you have a plan that you sort of like test it out and you've practiced it a few times and maybe you've not done the whole thing in one go, but you know, I know this works on the run. I know I can eat this and or I can eat this when I'm cycling and this doesn't cause me any problems. Then it gives you the confidence to actually follow it through when you get to your race too. Speaking of your PhD research, you've got, uh, you did a questionnaire yeah. that, uh, and we were speaking before and she was saying that just asking the question on the nutrition often gets people thinking about it and they go, whoa, actually, now that you asked that question, I'm not sure I know the answer. Uh, that questionnaire is still available? Yeah, yeah, it's on my website, so jemmasampson.com. Um, so basically, it's what people know about how the body uses carbs, uh, carbohydrate loading. 
So before a race, carbs for the pre-race meal and during competition, and then also for carbohydrate for recovery. And so each section has got five questions. And so, yeah, like you're saying, it's interesting because people are like, oh no, I know everything. And then they do this question like, maybe I don't know as much as I thought. And what I found really interesting is then people can start to reflect. I'm like, maybe this is why I'm not recovering so well between races and because I'm not focusing on my fueling or recovery. And so then you can start to see, oh, maybe there's this is, the, this is the gap. This is why I'm not performing as well as I should be based upon the training and the effort that I'm putting into it. Yeah, so if you're interested in a asking some questions and seeing the questions that you should be thinking about, uh, you head over to gemmasamson.com and uh, check out that questionnaire. Um, give you some insights into what you should be thinking about when it comes to carbohydrate usage and nutrition generally uh, for your triathlon training and racing. Exactly. And it's, I think sometimes people think you have to be in this all like all or nothing camp. You've either got to be high carb or you've got to be like low carb, but it's more about being smart with the carbs. And so there's times when you do want a lot, like if it's your key sessions, you're doing intervals and efforts based on that intensity. But if it's like your long, slow rides or runs um, or swims even, then you might not need as much and so you might be using more real food in those situations. So even within the same session, you can use different fuel sources to get the most out of it too. Brilliant advice. I think we could sit here all day and uh, pick Jenna's can. brains here. Yeah. <laughs> She'd happily talk about it all day. And to be honest, I'd happily talk about it all day too. Uh, I think uh, the font of knowledge would just keep uh, uh, spouting out. We'd, we'd be here all day, uh, but we obviously can't be here all day. Uh, but I hope you found this, this uh, video interesting and entertaining and thank you very much Gemma for your time welcome, and my for pleasure. your advice. Uh, I hope it helps some of you guys out there with your nutrition questions. Um, if you have any more questions drop them down below in the comments section use hashtag GTN Coaches Corner and we'll try and answer those questions in a future video on the Coaches Corner. Meanwhile thank you very much again Gemma. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.